So welcome everybody, my name is Paul, in case you haven't heard my channel, I talk a lot about uh, various aspects of the world transition I've been going through. I've been talking about this since 2012 and long before that even. And today I'm going to talk a little bit about the climate issue. Because uh, as many people know when they visit their family and friends during the holidays, they might have some active discussions about various things that are going on. And I found myself in a discussion on July 4th week, weekend about the whole climate issue and found out that uh, a lot of people just don't agree with me. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. And it's a really big issue and here I am, I'm entering almost my 70th year. And I've been around for a while and I remember back in the 70s it got awfully cold and we were talking about, oh my God, the, the Ice Age is coming back and all that stuff was happening, you know. Then around the late 70s uh, it started to warm up a little bit and then toward the middle of the 80s and 90s there was a lot of talk about all this global warming and all of a sudden it came out like, Oh my God, the end of the world is going to happen, all the poles are going to melt, and Antarctica is going to melt, and the seas are going to rise 20 feet, and all the cities are going to be gone, and there's no going to be snow for our grandchildren, and all that stuff, you know. And none of those predictions came true. So, one thing we know that the people who blab on the news about everything are usually not accurate, and they just go on and on about stuff, and there's a whole lot of Manipulation going on. There's definitely there's a lot of manipulation going on. You just have to face it. It's there's a lot of lying and deceiving. And for example, when I was a little bit younger, before the 90s, we were being told that oh man, the oil's going to end. There's an oil shortage. Oh my God, the world's going to end, and the oil price is going to go skyrocketing and crazy, and there won't be any more oil for people and so on. And that was. <laughs> Uh, oil shortage in the 70s and gas prices went up and everybody like freaking out and oh my god peak oil has happened and we're all going downhill from now and here we are 2022 and still there's loads and loads and loads of oil and they keep building more and more cars and more and more diesel generators and more and more tractors and every damn thing that uses oil. So you have to wonder well what are they talking about here? They don't know what they're talking about. It's a bunch of nonsense. We get told all kinds of stuff. It's first it's an ice age, it's in a, then it's a heat thing, and then it's the pause, and all this bullshit, excuse my language. And then they spend millions and billions and billions of dollars, and please donate here for climate action and all this stuff. And everybody gets all afraid and say, I'll send my $100 in or whatever, and hope they solve the climate crisis. But, you know, the fact is that there have been all this money spent supposedly on climate and there's never any reports so of thank you very much, we really, everything's good now, we're making a big difference in the climate. No, it just keeps going worse and worse. They just keep going on and on. No matter how much money you spend, no matter how, what you do, it's never going to end the climate crisis because they want the crisis to happen. It's a way of getting everybody afraid and hurting them all in one direction. And that's pretty darn obvious by now to anybody my age. Now, the people that want numbers, I find myself in an argument, and people are saying, like, here, here we are having a few beers, 2 o'clock in the morning, and someone says, okay, now prove what you say. Where, where, do, you, where do you get your information? <laughs> okay, well, uh, I don't know if I could give it to you uh, while we're sitting here drinking, but uh, maybe if you want to listen to about 10 or 12 hours of information, then you can get some of the details and understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> now, there's some really practical observations that we can figure, use our own common sense. Just common sense, figure out this, okay? Now, a lot of really wealthy people who ought to know better, and we don't have to mention any names right now, but they buy their beautiful, beautiful place at building fancy homes right on the waterfront. Billions and billions of dollars is spent being built on the waterfront and condos and every damn thing you can think of building on the waterfront. They're still building there. And they're not thinking about whether the seas are going to rise because if they're going to build billions of dollars, the insurance company is going to say, wait a minute here, Antarctica's going to melt here. You can't build there. But obviously they know better. They know the sea's not going to rise that fast. Now, a few real practical numbers here. I read recently that the average sea level, the sea level is supposedly rising <coughs> 
it's somewhere between two and a half to four millimeters per year. Now, for anybody who doesn't know a little bit of math here, 25 millimeters is one inch. So, if it's two and a half millimeters per year of sea rise, that means in 10 years it'll rise one inch. It might rise a hundred inches in a thousand years, <laughs> ten years, in a hundred years it right, might rise ten inches. That's not very much. Now, if, <clears throat> excuse me, if the seas are rising really crazy and everybody's expecting that, wouldn't you think that all around the world, all these um, huge ports like London and Bangkok, or not London, but anywhere around the world where there's a big seaport, New York, Miami, they're all having a... Don't you think they'll be changing their whole port and moving the buildings and doing all that? But they're not doing any of that. They're not doing any of that. So obviously, they don't think the seas are going to be rising anytime soon. You don't see all these companies building these big, huge ships and getting all ready for the sea level to rise 20 feet and into the cities and evacuating plans and all that. You don't see any of that happening. So it's all just talk, 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 climate change, climate change, send a donation, send a donation. We're going to fight the climate. We're going to fight the climate. Now, <laughs> some realistic numbers here. Around the middle, around the 1850s or so, this is the measurement that they're giving now. You know, they say that the seas, or rather the temperature of the earth, given all the data that they have, they, they think that the sea the temperature of the Earth, the average temperature of the entire planet, which is hard to measure. Think of how many data points you really need to get the average temperature of the entire planet. <laughs> how many data points you have. And they're not measuring in some places. In Antarctica, they may have like five measurements. And then, you know, down in New York City, right near the airport in the heated area, they have another measurement. And then all the airports have a place where there's a thermometer, and they take that measurement, and it's always a little bit warmer. So they average all those temperatures together, and they say after 170 years, we had one degree of climate average temperature rise. One degree. Now, let's supposing that CO2 from our cars and all these things that we're doing, uh, let's suppose, for example, and it's not really true, but let's imagine that all the climate change and all that one degree of heat for 150 years was depending totally on all our fossil fuels. Okay, now, that would mean that if we stop fossil fuels right this very minute across the entire planet, how long will it take for that to cool one degree? And then we have what? The ideal climate? What is the ideal climate? Does anybody know what the ideal climate is? Climate varies. It's just a very, very fact. I mean, we can use our common sense. We don't have to be a scientist. We don't have to be a brilliant genius to figure this stuff out. Climate changes. That's the way it is. If you look at the history of the ice on the North Pole, <clears throat> it expands and contracts, expands and contracts, expands and contracts. Sometimes it's free, sometimes it's not, sometimes it's plugged up. And the ocean currents that circulate around the Earth some of them times they wash up some warmer water up into the North Atlantic and up out, up near Western England and Ireland and up that area <clears throat> and into the North Pole, north of Greenland, and all of a sudden, okay, it melts the icy ice. And you know what that does? It cleans out the whole area because all that sea ice has been there. It's all mushy and full of dust and everything. And then when it melts, it gets back into circulation. And then a new cycle starts to come. And some of the ocean currents are hundreds and hundreds of years long. There's no way that we're going to stop the ocean currents, which are a major factor in our climate. We're not going to stop them by stopping to burn fossil fuel out of barbecues. That's not going to happen. <laughs> it's just, we have to use our common sense here. Now, when you're old as I am, I'm almost 70, you've seen a few changes, like I said earlier. And if you look at longer periods of history, now you have to get into some statistics and when they kept numbers and so on. And there's some brilliant people out there who do that. There's Tony Heller, there's Willie Soon, and then there's a number, a bunch of other people a climatologist who's been studying statistics and math and everything, and they're the, the guy who started the Weather Channel, the 
meteorologist for like 50 years, <laughs> and he says the whole climate hype is way out of way over the top. What they're using climate change for is to change the whole culture. Now, I listened to a broadcast recently uh, uh, on YouTube, an interview, and they were saying that the whole green thing, the numbers that they want to achieve is something around the 1900s. When there was one-fourth the population in the United States, and they didn't have all these automobiles and stuff like that that we have now, so... If you want the green, the so-called Green Deal to reach the 1910 levels with four times as many people and four times as many cars, or ten times as many cars and vehicles, that's just not going to happen. It's just absolutely not going to happen. Not in our lifetime. And who's going to measure the results? I mean, are we going to be like waiting a hundred years and sometime in the distant, you, oh yeah, well, we finally figured out that they were wrong and it didn't get... The Arctic and Antarctic didn't melt. <laughs> so something else is going on. Something political is going on that has nothing to do with climate. Climate changes, and if you just read about history, there's all kinds of big, huge storms. There's some massive, massive storms. Even in recent history, there's hurricanes in the United States back in the last few hundred years. Some of them have been absolutely incredible. In fact, right now, there's been like hardly any really major, major hurricanes like some of the big ones that happened years ago in the 1930s and the early 1900s and so on. <clears throat> Historically, this is a relatively quiet time, so to speak, compared to what some of the times in the past. Now, one of the big huge things that I always ask people, okay, and this is a major puzzle even for all the scientists, the climate scientists, okay, once upon a time in New York State, in that area in northern, northern America, there was a massive ice sheet, mile or two thick, a mile or two thick. Can you imagine how that is? Now, somewhere around 12,000 years ago, something like that, around that time, something happened and all that ice melted. Now, can you imagine what kind of heat it would take to melt miles, millions of square cubic miles of ice. What does it take to melt that? They still don't even know. They can't explain it. There weren't any SUVs. There's a low population. So something else entirely, completely, completely different happened to warm up the climate. And it really did warm. And it really was catastrophic climate change. A whole lot of large mammals died. And a lot of human species, a lot of people died. And there were flood myths all around the world because the seas literally rose for hundreds and hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of years. And in the early time, time when the glaciers melted on, on the North American continent in Europe, imagine the seas rising then? <laughs> Forget about Antarctica. Now, regarding Antarctica, let's think about that for a minute here. Antarctica is still damn cold. Damn cold. Yeah, around the edges, there's areas, South America, Australia, yeah, there's, there's coastal, there are all the ice sheets, some kind of, the ice sheets that are floating, if they melt, they're not going to raise the sea level, okay? And that happens. That's a cleansing process. It's a natural process. There's calving of these big, huge pieces of glaciers, that are, or I see ice that's out there. But the middle of Antarctica is damn, damn cold still. It ain't going to melt for any time soon for a long, long time. And if it does melt, when it does melt, if it does, it isn't going to melt from a high temperature of, 30, of 80 degrees on the South Pole. That's not going to happen. If it does melt, it'll melt from underneath because you have volcanic activity under the continent, under the sea ice, I mean, under the ice of Antarctica, there's volcanic activity that warms hollow chambers out there. And they found them, scientists found them, big, huge chambers under the ice that are <clears throat> warm enough to be in and uh, not frozen because there's, there's warmth coming up from the ocean, from underneath. You see, heat transfer comes from a, a dense thing to a less dense thing. You see, so if you have... Heat coming from the from the ocean bed where there's millions of little volcanic vents and some really large ones, and they're venting out this heat. There are areas of the underneath the ocean that are very very warm and there's life down there, and 
there's little creatures and weird things going on down there and that steamy water slowly seeps up and it heats the what the solid earth the magma heats the ocean the ocean slowly slowly heats and spreads that heat across maybe it expands slightly because anything heat heat expands and then it causes evaporation and the heat escapes out into the atmosphere now Antarctica is not going to melt anytime soon. Not Antarctica is a continent. There's ice there that's thick. There's there's mountains under there, ice in Antarctica that are over ten thousand feet tall in some areas. Can you imagine ten thousand foot mountain covered with ice? That's what would happen on North America. And I don't think it's going to melt anytime soon unless the pole shifts or something physically, and then it would be exposed and Maybe that maybe that is what happened long ago. Maybe the earth tilted a little bit and then all of a sudden that ice started to melt because it used to be on the pole and now it wasn't on the pole and now it starts to melt. Who knows what happened, but maybe an asteroid hit. Now, CO2. Carbon dioxide is a natural thing. If you want to know, it's measured in parts per million in the atmosphere. Parts per million. Now, what I've researched and read is that the parts per million has gone from about 200 parts per 250 parts per million, and it's getting close to 400 parts per million per million. Okay, now a respected scientist who knows these things, and there's others that when the CO2 content of our atmosphere gets too low, about 150 parts per million. The plants start dying. The plants need carbon dioxide, and we need the plants. If the carbon dioxide level gets that low, it's going to cause death across the, the world on the plants. It's, we're not going to have any crops. So we really need more carbon dioxide. Now, the research shows, okay, you get, look up Bert Rutan. He did a whole thing on CO2. Bert Rutan is one of the premier aviation um, engineers in the world and he knows a whole lot about science and math and also about climate and also about uh, chemistry and thermodynamics thermodynamics he has a presentation that's a long time pretty good long presentation about an hour long and in it he talks about how co2 content in the atmosphere is first of all it's a very very small amount and when the animals were really huge and there are massive trees and plants on the earth. The carbon dioxide content of the atmosphere was much, much higher than it is now. That's what enabled those plants to get so big and the animals fed off the plants and we had huge animals and they all died out after the glaciers ended in the end of the ice age about 12,000 years ago. So he said that the, the CO2 content of the Earth's atmosphere has been much, much higher in the past, and it wasn't caused by SUVs. And it also didn't cause thermal runaway in the atmosphere. He also made a very good point by analyzing the statistics carefully that even within our own last few thousand years, the Earth has had many, many, many cycles of cooling and warming. We only live 70, 80, 90, 100 years at the most. What are we, we don't know anything about the cycles. The cycles can be hundreds or hundreds and thousands of years long. There's all different kinds of cycles. There are 100,000 year cycle called the Milankovitch cycle. The Earth orbits around and slowly, every once in a while, the Earth tilts a little bit more. It goes a little bit further from the sun in this long, long track. And then it changes the climate, okay? It changes the air circulation on the planet. It changes the heat content on the planet because the sun has a big huge role in our climate. You can't ignore the sun. You cannot ignore the ocean currents, the jet stream, the underground volcanic activity, the solar activity in the orbit. You cannot ignore those things and in climate. They have a huge effect on climate and we can't change them. So how are you going to fight climate? You got to fight the fight the jet stream. You got to fight the ocean currents. You got to fight the sun. How are you going to fight climate change? Now, 
So we know that climate changes and we're in cycles and some of the cycles are very long, some of them are short. And if we talk about just, you know, the cycles that we're in and we talk about the last 30, 40, 50 years, that's nothing in climate. That's nothing. That's not a real climate cycle to measure the last 50 years. 1930s was extremely hot in the United States. I saw a very, very clear presentation by Tony Heller who's a statistician and a climate modelist, who says that the evidence clearly shows that there was much, much hotter temperatures, more degrees in the summer of 95 degrees or higher, all across the United States in the 1930s. Then it went down. And then it went down, down, down until it was really cold in the late 70s, and it started to rise again. And that's when they started pinning it. I'm like, oh my God, the climate's rising again. But it's just rising back to what it was before. It's not... It's already been that hot before, right in our last hundred years. So there's an awful lot of distortion and statistical lying. There's an old saying here, uh, liar, figures can lie and liars can figure, you see. So anytime you get a bunch of scientists together, especially with a spreadsheet and a computer, they can juggle, hey, let's tweak this little number over here and spread the scale out this way or squeeze it this way. And you can make a little tiny blip on a computer, like, oh, well, if we compact it, we squeeze, squeeze the time frame, well, that blip will suddenly look like a big this hockey stick or something. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. You can lie with numbers all any way you want to. There's all kinds of people who can tweak with a computer and plug in little variables and say, well, what if, what if this, that, and what if that thing? And then they make it a presentation like, oh, yeah, well, here it is. You know, we're the experts, and now you got to spend billions of dollars to save the planet. <clears throat> So, I urge people to think carefully about the, the information that they get online and, and on the news. Because if you want to get real facts, then get into the nitty-gritty. Start listening to hours of other kinds of information that are not on the normal TV. you got to get into the numbers. you got to use your brain. you got to get some, listen to some experts across the board and get some clarity so that you don't end up being a, a naive person. Oh, well, I heard it on CNN. So the 97% of the scientists, like, get into that. Now, that's a whole other story I don't want to get into right now, but the 97% number is just completely fraud. And it, it, the, the, the overall thing was some people say, yes, there is a little bit of human content, uh, of c contribution to the warming, but it's not catastrophic. <laughs> And then there's some to say, well, you know, it's, it's almost insignificant. The human portion of the CO2 content on the planet right now is only 25% of the total CO2 content. So that means if it's 400 parts per million, the human contribution is only 100 parts per million, and the rest is natural. And even if we stopped everything right this minute, and screeching everything in the hall, and just back to, the, back to horses and cows, and walking and bicycling and all that stuff it's still got 300 parts per million that come from natural sources volcanoes various the ocean evaporation and all different kinds of things and volcanic activity and ash now climate can change really rapidly <laughs> in ways that you don't even get told about for example, around the late 1890s, 1893, I think it was, a big, huge volcano called Krakatoa exploded. I think it's in Asia somewhere, Southeast Asia in the Philippines, up, up in that area somewhere. And it blew out, and they had a summer in America that, like, it starts snowing in August. The crops start losing. <laughs> so, you know, that can happen quickly. And if it happened today, my God, all the airline flights will be grounded because you can't fly in volcanic ash. Nobody's nobody's going to send a plane up there and go through the volcanic ash. It'll just ruin the engines and all. everybody will crash. So imagine if that happened today. Now, I want to make some other videos about some of these other subjects, but I want that was one about the climate. And I really urge people to you know, get off the TV and just stop watching that stuff and listen to some long, detailed discussion with graphs and just listen to a whole bunch of information. Like, I, I think it will take at least 10 to 20 hours of listening to a whole bunch of different experts with detailed explanations of why CO2 rising is not 
it, it is not the leading factor. In fact, Bert Rutan very clearly proved that the heating comes first and the CO2 follows. It, the CO2 is a follower of the climate warming. It doesn't cause the climate warming. <laughs> you see? But the graphs are so quick. If you put them together quickly, well, you say, well, the warming is here and the climate, the CO2 is right next to it, but they don't show you that it's the warming first and the climate and the CO2 rise after. If you put the graph close enough together, it looks like it's exactly the same. Well, as soon as the, the CO2 causes the warming, but that's not really true. So, I hope people do some of their own research, and uh, thank you again for listening. I hope to see you in some of my other videos. I talk about major issues that are going on in the world today, and try to get some common sense, and get away from the TV where they just repeat a whole bunch of stuff, and they... The government wants to manipulate. They want to charge more fees. They want to re reduce people's movements. They want to crush the economy. It's a deliberate attack, attempt to control. And these bureaucrats are really clueless about science. They just go by whatever they're told and they shuffle along with the whole crowd of sheep and everything and they don't even think clearly and they just say well it's really popular to talk about climate change right now so I guess I'll do that and then maybe I'll get some extra votes and stuff and use your common sense folks this is uh we're being hoodwinked in a big way bamboozled in a big way by about many many subjects so I hope to see you in some other videos and thanks again for listening please like and share